the lady leopard. Sasha, thank you so much for making time to speak with me because I know you have been extremely busy promoting your new EP, The Best Thing. How have things been for the last couple of days? Because I've been hearing you're all over the place. Ah, uh, really? It's been uh, it's been quite a uh, wild ride actually <laughs> in the past few days, and uh, the the just the anticipation of um, everything that I expected for this album has kind of come to fruition, and just even the expectations uh, for reception of this album and this project has been superseded. So I uh, I'm I'm having a good time right now. How has this type of promotion been for you and the reason why I ask that is because of course we are dealing with COVID-19 so it's a completely different world so it's not like you can you know just we like we would have been doing this interview one-on-one we wouldn't doing it at a hotel or at, hey. at a bar or somewhere but now everything has to be either at Zoom or what I'd like to do over the phone how has that been different for you? Uh, it's been it's been interesting because, like you said, it's over it's all virtual, and um, I I would say the positive element to that is that you can get a lot of ground covered virtually, <laughs> or <laughs> like you can be in Ontario in one minute and uh, the West Coast uh, ten minutes later, you know. So it's pretty interesting, and it's a pretty cool dynamic actually. I, I like the fact that, like I said, you can cover a lot of ground in one day with this new. Uh, new way of conversing and doing interviews definitely that but i want to ask you on a personal note too because i've been talking to everybody in this manner for the last couple of months because we're dealing with COVID 19 uh racism is in a different type of discussion these days um Mm -hmm. people are literally arguing back and forth about wear a mask wear a mask i think not wearing a mask. I mean, you're just seeing all of these things constantly, not just on the news, but on social media. You're seeing it as rise as ever been. How right. have you personally been dealing with this whole new world? Um, you know, to be honest, really, I um, I take every every day as it comes, and I have been so preoccupied with this EP and the release and the music video. Um, that it has taken up a lot of my attention. Like, yeah, sure, everywhere you go, you, you, it's COVID or it's a new um, bylaw or it's, you know, something on the media. But um, a lot of my attention has been taken up by what I am laser focused on right now. And that's the executing a project that I have spent two years and plus in the making. And, you know, I'll be damned if anything <laughs> takes my focus off of that. So, I mean, I've been, like I said, taking things as it comes and just focusing on what's in front of me. Why did you still decide to release the best thing, even though you knew we were in a different world? You know, it was it was time. It was time. It was just, you know, um, all the elements and all the components came, actually came together at this at this time. In fact, I did have to wait a little bit. Uh, I was planning on releasing actually earlier on this year uh, in April. I did have to postpone a couple on a couple occasions this project, but then I was like, you know, uh, we're coming this summer. We're coming into just you know um, the, the year of getting slipping away, and I'm like, you know, I've I've got all the elements in place, and I'm noticing how we're expanding our creativity online, so. I said, you know, this could work, and so I ran with it. And uh, so far, it's it's actually amazing. It's the the, the um, I guess the fruit of what's happen happening at a time like this. So, well, we're really happy that you have to get to take our mind off of some of the tough things that are going on. We just discussed a little bit earlier, but I right. want to discuss a little bit about your career though, and the love of country music because originally you're from Montreal, correct? Yep. Yep. Where did that love of music come from? Because for folks who are listening to this whole interview on Rudy Blair Entertainment Media, RudyBlairMedia.com, you need to listen to this woman's voice raw. <laughs> you can sing anything you want. You have an <laughs> amazing voice. Why was country the right uh, oh, Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, um, so I was born in Montreal. We moved when I was three, so I don't have too much of a recollection of as a baby in Montreal. We moved to a small town uh, when I was three, and that was where I spent most of my formative years. Um, and it's you know, it it was the it's where I got my that experience of country living. It was rural, small towns, you know, farms, one yellow light in the middle of down on one main street, and I lived on a dead end road. And um, my love of country music came in because of, my, I believe, my surroundings. My parents were musicians. They were not country musicians, but they played country music uh, at times. And my mother, my earliest recollection was the Patsy Cline record. My mother would just be spinning nonstop. And so I fell in love with 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 Patsy and, and country music. And it was just a way of life for me. What were you writing as you were growing up? I mean, were you writing songs as a youngster and as a teenager? Yeah, I mean, I was. I started off like in elementary writing poems, and then writing writing little songs. Or and you know what? It was it, it was uh, when I, when I, we moved to uh, the the Durham region. I guess I got um, I had the experience of diversity and urban culture, and so you know I've I've had experience or or had um, influence in all those genres as well uh so i mean i wrote i wrote songs that maybe at times um well it was kind of they were kind of juvenile because they were so young <laughs> but um you know i've had all sorts of influence of music in my life so it was just a, a, a journey for me um going through music and different uh, genres that I liked and that, that appealed. But then when I became a solo artist, the f- it's like I just came back to my roots and playing guitar and singing what was true to me. Okay, you just said something. When you decided to become a solo artist, were uh-huh. you with a group before that? Well, you know, I have a twin sister. And uh, we we sang together. Like, you grow up, you have a twin or you have a family members that you sing we usually sing together we sang together and we tried a little uh a little something that just i guess as siblings maybe didn't work out as best really close to it didn't work out as best as we had anticipated but um when i say solo artist i mean like when i when i uh, you know took that serious step like this is something i want to do i'm going to do like 100 well, percent um well, you I was going to jump in and say you've definitely done that also. Um, was there ever a point where anybody tried to discourage you from going down this journey? I know for myself, uh, as a black person in broadcasting, uh, there were once or twice where people were like, no, nah, that's not going to happen to you because of this yeah. or because of that. Yeah. Has that any anything like that ever happened to you? Mm, if, if we're talking pertaining to music, uh, I, I mean, what uh, the – the experience I get is like, oh, you're a singer. What kind of music do you sing? And when you sometimes, you know, when you tell them, oh, country music, it's like really, like it's just kind of like a um, uh, shock for for some. <laughs> and uh, like, why country? And so, I mean, I've never been discouraged. Like, oh, you're not. Uh, that's interesting that you asked that because I don't recall anybody saying you're not going to make it because of this i just it's more so more or less their reaction and yeah no and i get that too believe me you know being on radio i would always have when somebody would meet me and they'd give me that look and i'd look at them and go yeah you didn't know i was black did you and you could always (laughs) you could always tell and then they'll say no i didn't you didn't sound black and i'm going what does a black person sound like and then that's when they yes. do uh um yeah and that's that. the conversation changing yeah, yeah, yeah. i i can relate to that 100 uh, yeah it's just, it's just the nature of it you know well um, you know things are changing now which is right. which is the good thing and you know one of the things that i read that that you were that that says in your press release saying that you want to help make those changes why is that important um, now, help make the changes in terms of uh, if we're talking in terms of the country music industry and uh, being underrepresented. Well, um, that's just exactly that because basically, you know what? It shouldn't matter what color you are. If you love what you do, do it. 
Right, absolutely. And that's the thing. I mean, um, I'm just honestly, really, I'm just authentic to myself. I'm, I'm, tr- I'm doing what is what is true to me, which is the confirmation of um, all the things I've ever dreamed of and um, feels right and organic to me. So in pursuing that, uh, it, it just so happens that I'm one of the few uh, in the Canadian country music industry who just happens to be um, a, you know, a person of color or, um, mis- or underrepresented. Uh, and it's not something I set out to, to make a statement about. I just wanted to be my, to be myself. And it presented, it actually presented an opportunity to say, Hey, wait a second. Yeah. You know, um, if, if there's room made for someone like me, perhaps there could be, you know, a, a path that is blazed for others that look like me to come up yeah, or, uh, and, and not only that you know it's you know you talk about breaking stereotypes and breaking molds and I think that what's important is that there is no prerequisite to becoming where a country music artist is concerned um, other than you're authentic to the genre and authentic to your art the prerequisite shouldn't be what color you are you know so um, I think that just me being who I am is making a way for somebody that and more people who look like me or or more people who are interested and thought, okay, I can't do that because I'm going to be questioned, you know. Amen. Amen to everything you said. I absolutely agree. And I actually said the exact same thing myself, too. And, you know, making a statement is important. 2016 in your career, there was a statement made. At the Havelock mm-hmm. Jamboree, what happened there? Oh, that was awesome. Uh, Havelock Country Jamboree entered a contest and um, didn't know too many people from the back of my hand. You know, all I knew was I was up against a lot of people that um, were really talented and and um, had a footing in the country music community. And um, I went out to Havelock, poured my little heart out, and before you knew it, I, I found myself in the finals. That the only female left uh, against. Uh, the male country acts and uh, I actually won and that was mind blowing and it opened up the doors I think for me to be uh, I guess I don't know validated for lack of better words as a country artist because um, I'm a more I love to, I'm, I'm more inclined to traditional country originally and that's kind of the angle that I went with uh, when I went into the country music star was just the stuff that I was familiar with which is traditional and uh, I won just being myself and doing what I like to do (laughs) now for country radio obviously I had to kind of come up to speed a bit and get more you know have more commercialized uh, product but that the have a country jamboree the next country music star honestly was a, a, a launching pad to where I am today well, we're going to get to the uh, new music in a second, but I'm curious about one thing because um, when it comes to the Canadian country music scene, they're very inviting. The talent is incredible. I always say yes. it's like this bubble that wants to explode because yeah. when artists of yourselves are being invited, it's like, oh my God, there's another great one and another great <laughs> one and another great one. And you still have the established stars. Um, who are still right. doing their thing. What was it like for you as your career has been building, not just meeting those other hungry artists who are, you know, right there with you and, and right. taking that path, but then meeting the the greats like the Terry Clarks and all the rest of them. What was that like for you? Oh, geez. I, it was just, you know, it was like, like it, being in Hadlock, for instance, or being at uh, Boots, Boots and Hearts, and you're in there, and you're in the same, sharing the same space as these people, or having a conversation with them, it was really like it was. It's just a, a surreal moment because it's like, oh my gosh, I'm opening up for Brett Kissel, or I'm opening up for Jess Lockwood, or I'm, and these people I've looked up to or, or been inspired by, um, long before I even got the chance to step on the same same stage as them. So it's it's rewarding, if I can say, Louise. It feels like, oh my goodness, like I've, I have allowed myself and persevered uh, so far as to be able to share the same stage as these people. Like, what a reward. And again, much, much deserved. That reward 
is your new EP, The Best Thing. What yeah. is this EP about, and how does it represent <laughs> your career right now? Well, this EP, is, I think it's just a little bit of everything, little fragments of me and each song, and uh, covers topics that are like something as universal as cheers, you know, um, having a good time, embracing yourself, your uniqueness, and celebrating it, um, and or something as a tune like runaway and uh you know falling in love and being okay to, to trust yourself and take the risk to uh, achieve that so i mean this album is titled the best thing and it's actually um it's actually just the short form or title of a, a single that's on the ep called the best thing that never happened and uh yeah you got to take a listen to that and you know the best thing that never happened basically just speaks about taking risks and taking chances because the best thing that could ever happen may be, very well be the best thing that never happened if you don't take those risks so this album is was this city um it's a collaborative effort of me reaching out to writers and producers that are credible and um really 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 top at their art and their game and reaching out to them and getting the response yes you know when i could have been very afraid to reach out to them because uh for fear of rejection but they said yes and i got like in my opinion like some of the greatest the greatest writers on this album and the greatest producer dan swinnemer um i had the i had the the best thing going (laughs) for the ep uh in every element I've, like I said, I've heard every song, and that's why I said off the top, what an incredible voice you have. Well, thank um, you. Amazing. What is the first single released from this EP? Well, the first single that was released from the EP was Tears. And, um, yeah, that's been doing really well, and it's been making way. Just, because Tears is, Tears is just a different sounding tune, you know. It's like, it, it's still keeping it country, but it's got a little bit of elements of you know some backgrounds that we're familiar with like as let's say uh, a little bit of rock or a little bit of funk or a little bit of uh i don't know i just like to say it's a synergistic collection of instrumentation that dan put together that makes it a fresh new sound on the country music scene what is tears about tears is uh well you'd think that it's about just partying and drinking and you know raising a glass but tears is actually about celebrating a self-celebratory song of you know the first verse about the lady who turns 87 and and um she's, she's dancing in leopard the lady in leopard you know up on the bar turns 87 she starts smoking cigars she's just being unique and and fun and quirky to herself and there's no, it's like being outside of the box without any fear of judgment uh and you know being non-traditional and having a good time doing so you know, it sounds like a great song, and like I said, I've had a chance to hear the whole EP, so I'm looking forward to the fans of getting the chance to be part of all of this, too. Um, speaking of which, do any chance for any virtual performances happening this week? Yes, actually, I have a Southern Stampede coming up August 15th, and I did a few um, during the initial stages of the COVID, where, you know, we were working around how we're going to how we're going to continue to showcase. So, yeah, the next one right now is Southern Stampede. Any chance of CMOA? I think I got that right. CMAO? Um, CMAO? Um, uh, yeah. I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. Uh, every day I get a new, I get a new email. I get a new surprise. So uh, you know, I, I look forward to that opportunity. Be sure to arrive. And what about CCMAs? Because of course uh, we're still getting close to that too. Yeah, I mean, I that'd be stellar. Um, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, Nothing, nothing I can confirm as to date, but I'm anticipating. Okay. Well, well, fingers are crossed there. In the meantime, to see what's going on with you, social media is the place to go. Where do we go to follow you? Come to Instagram. Come to Instagram. Look me up. Uh, Sasha, Sasha Basaji. My artist name is Sasha. 
Uh, you can go to www.imsasha.com. And Sasha is spelled with an S-A-C-H-A. Um, and then all, all other social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. Uh, <laughs> I got to up my t- TikTok game. <laughs> I don't know how you guys do TikTok. I'm sorry. I, TikTok was <laughs> like my limit. I was just like, no, I'm not going to TikTok. <laughs> it, it was mine too. <laughs> oh, I said that too. I was like, oh, the heck with that. But then, then I got to have that little TikTok bug, and believe it or not. So, yeah, it's, it's, never say never. That's true. You never know. I might end up on it too. Yeah, you, you never bet. know. You Look, thank you so much for making time for speaking with me. Um, thank you so much for the great music that you've released during this tough time. Oh, my really. Pleasure. Really looking forward to maybe sometime in the future that we can do an interview in person. But please, please, please be safe, be good. And again, thank you so much for the great music. Likewise. Thank you so much, Rudy. It's been a pleasure. Take care. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Yeah, you too. Okay, bye-bye.